What's going on everybody? Welcome back to T3G and today we're working on something that should look familiar. We worked on it about six months ago, about give or take, and it is my mom's computer. We previously upgraded the mechanical hard drive to something, uh, basically a newer mechanical hard drive, thinking it's going to help the system. And then also we reinstalled Windows because it was running slow. Happens to be that the hard drive seems to not be working as good as I expected it to. And then also Windows seems to basically have corrupted. Uh, nothing due on my mom's part. It was actually after since the after the install I did a little while after that I noticed there were some hiccups with the OS and just never got a chance to reinstall it for her. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be installing an SSD so it runs a lot faster. She doesn't need any more than 240 gigs. This is a uh, 8 data SP550 240 gig SSD and we will have the link to it in the description below and then this is right here Windows 7 we are going to be installing this and then we're going to be installing upgrading to the free Windows 10 and then we also will be going over some uh, information on when after you're done installing Windows 10 on what security or privacy features that you might want to not maybe have selected if you're worried about your privacy so let's go ahead and get right into this all right, so first things first is we have it hooked up here. This over here is actually my other computer. Over here we have it hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and hit the power button and see how long it actually takes to load up. Now, because the OS, of course, is having some issues, it's gonna take even longer than normal. Um, but let's take a look at where it's at now, and then once we're done, we'll see where it then is running at that point. And then I'll leave all the specs to the system down below so we can all see what it's actually running and we might actually annotate it also as well in the video.
So as you guys can see, that definitely took some time. Uh, yes, we did have to put in a password. I'm going to do the same thing around when we have to do it for with the SSD, just to kind of show the similar test. Um, but regardless, that took a very long time to go get up to the password part. And then after putting in the password, the additional uh, part after that. Now that, of course, is, I think, mainly due to Windows not being properly installed or properly you know maybe corrupt or whatever it is uh, so definitely a fresh install is going to help with that just in general but on top of that throwing in an SSD is going to improve the speed dramatically so let's go ahead and get into installing the SSD and then getting everything installed software wise and then we'll go from there We do have the SSD finally installed. What I personally like to do is I disconnect the other hard drive that we're gonna keep in there for storage uh, when we're installing a fresh OS, only because I've personally experienced where the OS will kind of split up the files where they're installed, m most of them on the SS SSD, but some on the uh, additional hard drive and then if you ever remove the additional hard drive then your system actually becomes corrupt and you have to do a reinstall so what I make sure is, is that any additional hard drives are not connected until I do a full install on the main hard drive so that's what we're going to do right now and then uh, let's go ahead and get that done out of the way and then we'll go uh, check out the system <music> Alright guys, it's a lot of days later. I can't even explain to you how long I procrastinated on this. So as you already saw, we're having a lot of difficulties installing Windows and then upgrading Windows. And we've recently found out the problem due to that is either the memory slots are bad or the memory itself is bad. And I'm not going to replace the board or the RAM just because this is an AM2 board and DDR2 RAM, which is very old and most likely not going to find. I mean, the RAM I might be able to find because it is AMD, so you can actually find some RAM on eBay, which I've already done. But you most likely won't find a replacement board if it is the board. So without trying to replace old items, I said screw it we're just gonna we were at uh, tiger direct before the stores closed down we picked up some really good deals and stuff and so basically we're gonna do this athlon there it's the 860k athlon with this gigabyte f2a 78m board fm2 processor fm2 plus processor or board socket all that as you can see here, it, it was 16 bucks, so we're, we're really not putting a lot of money into this, but it's going to do what it needs to be doing, and really that's mainly what it is. We just, we got to get this done, so the next part is to swap out the board, the CPU, the RAM. <clears throat> we have some DDR3 RAM that's been kind of sitting around, so we're going to use that in there. Once we get that set up, hopefully Windows, well, there's no hopefully, it will definitely install because we also have that SSD, so that's also going to uh, make sure that Windows does install. So yeah, we were having some uh, motherboard slash RAM issues, uh, unfortunately, but we'll go from here, get that installed, and get it all said and done. <music>
guys so all the components are now finally installed it's ready to go we're gonna try to fire it up see if it posts if it does then we're gonna go ahead and install windows and then after that I'm gonna take you through additional steps on what I like to do once the computer is up and running uh, one thing I didn't show in the video is that I am using an old graphics card nothing fancy just something to give us video onboard graphics on this are available but if you have an APU CPU we are using a AMD Athlon 860k which requires a separate graphics card so we're just using an old Nvidia 8800 so uh, once again this computer is not going to be used for any kind of gaming just basic stuff so we don't need anything new or crazy but let's go ahead and hit the start and see if get any kind of uh, luck with it starting Yeah. Alright, and there it is. We're going to go ahead and install this. I'm not going to take you guys through this again. We've already done it a few times. I'm just going to go ahead and do this real quick. And then we'll come back and I'll show you some stuff to do. Alright guys, so here we are. Got the computer finally, the OS installed. Obviously we're having a few issues. One, we don't have internet. And that's because if you go into your device manager you'll notice here that sometimes even though you install maybe the most current version of uh, Windows 7 or whatever it is you'll notice that sometimes your uh, USB stuff and your Ethernet controller sometimes do not install properly and that is the time that you will have to use the CD that comes with the motherboard uh, and then once you install this, then you can get the newest ones off of the company's website. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, once you're done with that, go ahead and go to your web browser. Uh, if you want to upgrade, so here's the thing. If you're just looking to do Windows 7, then you just, uh, you're not going to do this part. You're going to skip it. But if you're looking to go from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and you don't want to wait for the updates to prompt you when it's ready, you can skip that part. But first thing you'll have to do is that you want to go to Google.com and download the Google browser real quick. And the reason we're doing this actually is because um, if you don't, want to do all the updates that are available you'll then have to get the Google browser because it's going to be newer than the Internet Explorer that's on here and it'll allow you to do this next part because if your Internet Explorer is too old it won't actually allow you to do what I'm about to do and I will link this page in the bottom but if you want to know uh, you can go to google.com and search Microsoft account and usually it's the first one on there it says Microsoft account a single login to services and devices and of course you want to just verify that it is microsoft.com and here you're going to get this uh, this is the website and you're going to hit sign in I'm obviously not going to show you guys the sign in for this but I am going to sign in okay once you log in you're going to click on manage my account right here you'll see it says free upgrade to Windows 10 and when it will say Windows 10 is everything you love about Windows 7 plus improved performance blah 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 you click find out more takes you to the next part and you go to download now and that's how you skip all the updates and everything and go straight to Windows 10 once you hit download now it will download the installer and then you do once it's here which is actually really quick because it's off the it, uh, the installer runs off the web you click this hit run hit yes then of course it says here Windows 10 setup so that's how you know it is Windows 10 if you need to verify now it's gonna start downloading the Windows 10 this will take quite a bit of time and then after that it's gonna install it so let's go ahead and let this uh, do what it needs to do and we'll get to the next part alright guys so the update to Windows 10 has finished I do want to mention I don't know if I mentioned it I, I know I said you can download the Windows 10 updater uh, and not wait for Windows update to tell you to update 
upgrade to Windows 10 but you also do want to do all the Windows 7 updates before you do this because if you don't it'll give you a few problems but that being said so now we're on the part where you're done installing Windows 10 and you're gonna set it up for the first time here it says get going fast to automatically just use express settings now if you're one of those people that is worried about uh, privacy and stuff like that where you don't want to be tracked or you don't want certain things being sent out to Microsoft you don't want to click on use express settings here on the right actually in the bottom left here it says customize settings so you click on here and this is where you're going to be able to customize what's on and what's off from Windows 10 uh, and then you'll see quite a few ones like personalize your speech typing and inking input by sending context and calendar details along with other associated input data to Microsoft we do not want that on I don't want any of that stuff being sent uh, send typing and inking data to Microsoft to improve the recognition and suggestion platform uh, you could leave that on but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off anyways let apps use your advertising ID for experiences across apps sometimes I leave that on for this I'll just turn that off let Skype if installed help you connect with friends in your address book and verify your mobile number SMS uh, we don't need to have that on location uh, turn on find my device and let Windows and app request your location including local location history and send Microsoft and trusted partner some location I would leave this on but because this is not my computer we're gonna go ahead and turn off this is for my mom so we're just gonna turn that off too and then later on I'll see if she needs that on or not uh, up here automatically connect to suggested open hotspots not all networks are secure nope don't want to do that uh, most likely that'll never happen because this is a desktop not a laptop but regardless we're gonna keep that off automatically connect to networks shared by your contacts No, we don't need to do that we're going to turn that off automatically connect to hotspots temporarily to see if paid Wi-Fi services are available it's not a laptop so that doesn't need to be on send full error and diagnostic information to Microsoft we can definitely leave that on just in case there are any errors or anything like that this way Microsoft can you know see what they are and hopefully send us a fix even though there are Windows 10 problems right now quite a bit of them that's another thing I'll show you what to do real quick but this uh, you want to go ahead and keep that on so that way you can help get those updates to fix those problems as fast as possible go ahead and hit next you can get a few more things use smart screen online services to help protect against malicious content and downloads sure we'll leave that on use page prediction to improve reading sp speed up browsing and make your overall experience uh, your browsing data will be sent to Microsoft now we're good get updates from and send updates to other PCs on the internet to speed up your app and Windows now nah, we're good we don't need that on if you have slow internet that might actually s slow down your network and your internet so you want to actually make sure to turn that off uh, me Cortana uh, not now my uh, mom most likely will never use this so we'll go ahead and turn that off uh, it says new apps for the new Windows I will choose my own apps later but you can do it here but since I didn't install any apps right now we're just gonna leave it the way it is hit next now it's gonna finalize the setup and then from there we're gonna go ahead and install some things and I will by the way everything that I'm talking about website wise that's all gonna be linked in the description uh, but once it starts up we're gonna go ahead and go to the next part and start downloading our software and there are, is a few software that I will recommend to you guys just in case you do need it if you don't have availability to some products that are available for paid customers um, you are going to be able to find some stuff that is uh, free uh, which is open source stuff but it I use it Dalbor uses it everybody that we know uses it so uh, it's definitely worth it if you don't have the money to spend it all right Windows 10 has started up first thing I do is right here you have a giant Cortana search on the bottom left next to your start menu um, I don't like having that giant search so what you want to do is right click on the taskbar uh, go to Cortana and you can hide it or you can show Cortana icon instead uh, which is what I do a lot of the times uh, we Microsoft Edge is on there but I prefer Google Chrome for anybody I know this is what I recommend or Firefox uh, I have both installed just in case for some reason Chrome's not working this way you can go to Firefox Edge is literally the last possible uh, resort if you know if it's something that you might have to do 
All right, so now that everything's on, let's go ahead and get some software. Um, we can do updates first if we want to, um, but uh, what we'll do is we'll get some software first. So uh, open up your browser. In this case, I do, once again, use Google Chrome. Uh, we are going to set that as default. So let's see here, change that. This is, I'll show you this in a little bit, but this is where you can change what to use. So let's go ahead. The website and some of you might already know this some of you might not but the website you want to go to to uh, get all your basically all your majority of your software is ninite.com and what's great about this is ninite once you download the software that you want you can keep that install file in your downloads folder and if you ever need to run updates for that software that you downloaded you just open up that file and it'll update all the software so that's really cool uh, so as I said I'm gonna do Google Chrome Firefox even though Google Chrome's already on there I'm gonna select it here so that way every month I can do updates with this installer uh, definitely gonna do Skype uh, team viewer image burn uh, CD burner CD burner XP is basically a free CD burning software if you need to make DVDs or CDs this is a very good software it's free to use team viewer if you're a little more advanced and you have a bunch of computers that you help out with and stuff like that of course you know what team burn uh, team viewer is uh, image burn is a ISO burner uh, basically allows you to burn ISOs to DVDs and stuff like that um, Revo I use for uninstalling stuff. Revo allows you to uninstall everything in a more, uh, more, in the most ultimate way to basically remove everything off the system of that particular software. Another thing that we do get is for the media section, we do do iTunes, VLC, Audacity, Auto Audacity, Audacity, that's it. Oh man. Um, she most likely will never need this, but just in case, this way I select it and it's there. K Light Codex, just in case you need for uh, playing any kind of videos and stuff like that. Uh, CCCP, uh, once again a codec. Uh, Spotify, mm, you know what, we'll keep that off there. Uh, you know what, we'll select it, why not? So we'll have Spotify selected, just in case if some weird reason she decides to actually start... Uh, using Spotify for compression software, you can choose WinRare, PZip, or Z or 7-Zip. I always do 7-Zip. It's a very, very easy to use, really good software. For runtimes, I select all of them: Java 8, Net 4.6.1, Silverlight, Air, and Shockwave. They have removed uh, Adobe Reader and also as well Adobe Flash. I don't know why it used to be there. They removed it. I don't know the reasoning for it i really don't need to even, even care to be honest uh under imaging you can select any of these uh for her uh, i'm not really gonna and honestly i don't use any of these myself but you definitely can try them out they're all free all the software here is uh open source software so it is free to use uh for documents we do libreoffice so libreoffice essentially is if you need office but you don't have the money for microsoft office libreoffice is the best open source that you can use for office and then it'll allow you to make it'll actually allow you to make documents that later on you can open in microsoft office if you go somewhere that does have microsoft office pdf creator just in case you need to create pdfs microsoft does have one built into their system but i do like this one a lot better um, I don't know, just something I'm used to using. Okay, for security, these are the two I would recommend. Avast for your internet security and then malware bytes for any malware issues. Avast does have a fuller version that you can purchase, uh, but you also do have a free version as well. So does malware bytes. Um, let's see here, under file sharing, they do offer QBitTorrent uh, or Emu. I don't use either one of those for myself, nor will I put it on her computer. Uh, you do have some other things like Evernote, Google Earth, Steam, and stuff like that that it can download for you. She doesn't need any of that. I could do OneDrive, Google Drive, and Dropbox, which, you know what, why not, just in case uh, I have her, if I need her to do something or like that, or I want to share. Uh, but yeah, the main ones I would recommend for security, Avast and Mailwarebytes. For documents, LibreOffice, if you need Office, but you don't want to pay for Microsoft. 
Uh, definitely do all the run times, but those are the three that I would recommend. Avast, Mailerbytes, and LibreOffice. And also VLC, definitely, if you have videos that you need to play and they're a format that like iTunes necessarily won't play or certain other players won't play, I like VLC the best. And of course, Google Chrome and Firefox, you should not be using Edge. Edge should be a last priority. It is good. Edge is better than Internet Explorer, but you should still definitely be using Google Chrome or Firefox. All right, once you have selected everything, you hit get your night night. It's going to tell you that it's going to start here in just a moment. And down here, you'll see it's downloaded. You just click on that and you hit yes. And then it'll start. You can click show details and it'll start downloading. Now, this will take a little bit of time depending on your hard drive and your internet speed. We do have an SSD in here, so it will go as fast as possible. If something is already up to date, like Google Chrome is for us, it says OK and up to date. Once it's done installing, it'll say for status, it'll say OK. And you can run this installer that you've now downloaded every month to make sure all your software is up to date that you downloaded from Nine Night. And that's essentially what I always do on all my computers. I leave this installer in a download folder and I go to it every month, double click on it and it'll start running updates. If something's up to date, it'll just tell me that it's already up to date. And if it's not up to date, it'll start installing the update. So we're going to go ahead and let this run and then we'll go to the next step. All right, now that everything is installed, as you can see here, what I like to do first off is, well, first, I like to get rid of some of these icons because I don't think they need to be on the screen. So like the Media Classic and stuff like that, I'll put in the trash. Um, depending on whose computer it is, the Avast Free Antivirus, I'll remove that after the restart. Uh, she doesn't need the Google Docs on the, on the actual desktop, so we're going to remove that as well. So let's go ahead and put those. The Google Drive doesn't need to be there, so we'll move that. The Dropbox, that doesn't need to be there. The Revo on Installer doesn't need to be there. Um, the Malware Bytes and the um uh, the malware bytes and the vast, I will remove those after the restart. I do like to restart the computer after I do the installs. But first, I want to remove some of the icons. The B PDF creator doesn't need to be there. We can move that to the trash as well. Uh, Google Slides, that doesn't need to be there. Image Burn does not need to be there. Uh, let's see here. We'll leave Firefox. We'll leave the CD Burner. Actually, you know what? We'll move the CD Burner in the trash because she doesn't need that either for now. Audacity doesn't need to be there. We'll put that. Uh, the VLC player really doesn't need to be on the desktop, so we'll remove that as well. Uh, yeah, that's a lot cleaner. We're going to go ahead and em always empty your recycling bin once something's deleted if you're certain you don't need it uh, because it does save memory or space on your hard drive. All right, so now that that's set, we're going to go ahead and first restart the computer now that everything's installed just to make sure it's... Sometimes software does require a restart before it starts working right. So we're going to go ahead and restart that and make sure that's done. Once it is restarted, uh, we're going to go ahead and activate Avast and Malware Bytes. Uh, you can still activate it. You can sign. You do have to sign in to register it under an email. And then you get your every year you have to do that because it, it is a year length. But it is free. Uh, like I said, there is a paid version that you can uh, purchase directly from the app. But it is free. And the restart on this thing is so much faster. All right. Now that that's done, looks like everything's loaded. Uh, Avast hasn't been activated yet because it would have started. Let's see here. Google Drive's coming up. That's fine. Let's see if there's anything else. Skype's going to come up. We'll disable all this stuff that is coming up. We got uh, Spotify too. These are some of the software that do make themselves automatically come up. Okay, it does look like Avast did uh, start up, so that's good. Uh, but we do still want to register. But like I said, we're going to remove a bunch of this stuff. There are issues that Windows 10 does still have, uh, unfortunately. So some of those issues can be actually uh, fixed by removing services during startup and removing uh, specific apps during startup. And the way you do that, I will show you here in just a moment. Uh, you do want to do this to help you fix any problems that you might be experiencing with Windows 10, or at least uh, quite a few of them. I know some people will be like, well, I, w I like my computer to start up with these programs. I understand. Unfortunately, Windows 10 at the current moment doesn't understand that. So to fix your problems, this is what you would have to do and then open the program later on. 
okay now that everything's started let's go ahead and make sure that it doesn't start from here on out so we're going to go ahead and quit some of this stuff all right what you want to do is you right click on test on your test bar here at the bottom go to task manager uh, click on more details and this is actually going to show you everything that's possibly running for the processes the performance of the computer and then you can go to startup and they made this a lot easier compared to uh, Windows 7 and basically here uh, you can select the program and hit disable and that'll disable it from starting up so we don't want Spotify to start uh, we don't need this to start uh, that's a Spotify web helper we don't need that to start Skype we don't want that to start up we don't need the OneDrive to start up uh, Java updater doesn't need to start up let's see here Dropbox does not need to start up and that's basically it I leave iTunes helper because that does tend to cause problems if you disable that with iTunes so I do leave that a vast obviously you want to leave that because that's your antivirus and uh, the other one is PXI mouse that's just a thing part of the windows that you don't want to really disable them all right so now that that's done you like I said you do want to disable some services but first let's go ahead and uh, sign in to Avast so that way it's uh, you can create an account you can sign in with Facebook or with uh, Google uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with Google and we are obviously gonna skip this part So once you, as you saw, once you sign in with Google, it's going to say, do you want to create an account or link? You just want to do create an account, uh, even though you just signed in with Google, but you do have to still create the account. Once you do that, you might get something like this. You can hit refresh. Or if it doesn't work, if it keeps giving you this unexpected error, it'll work after the next restart. But basically, that's it. You are all set. Your antivirus is registered, and that's set on that. Now, let's also make sure that Mailware Bytes is set up as well. So we'll go ahead and open that up and make sure that also starts during startup. Let's go ahead. Uh, looks like it's already scanning. Let's see here. Settings. All right. Looks like that's actually already set. It does check for updates, looks like, but that should be fine. All right. Close the OneDrive so that's not there anymore. Exit drop out so that's not there. All right, perfect. All right. So now that that's all set up, I just go ahead and remove these icons from the screen. So Mailware Bytes doesn't need to be there. Avast doesn't need to be there. Let's see here. Google Chrome, we definitely leave there. I leave Firefox, Libre, I leave there. Skype, I leave there. Team Viewer does not need to be there. And we'll go ahead and remove Spotify for now because that doesn't need to be there either. All right, once all that is set up, your icons are removed that you don't want on the screen anymore. The less icons, the better for the startup of the computer as well. I mean, with SSDs nowadays, it's not really too much of a problem, but I like a cleaner desktop, and some icons just don't need to be on the desktop. Now, once that's done and we have stopped uh, startup items, we also want to change some of the services basically what you're going to do is you're going to click on your start menu button and you're going to just start typing and what you want to start typing is ms config so m as in mary s as in sam c o n f i g you'll see it says system configuration is going to be the best match you're going to just hit enter once that's up you'll see this system configuration window come up you want to click on services in services make sure in the bottom left corner you hit hide all Microsoft services because you don't want to disable any Microsoft services once you click on hide all Microsoft services and there's a check mark there then you're just gonna see services that are part of that are not part of Microsoft that are just outside of Microsoft's applications and what you want to do now is hit disable all and that's gonna disable all the services that do not need to start up except for Avast. Avast is just going to start up. You hit apply and then you hit OK and it will say that you do need to restart for these changes to save. Go ahead and hit restart and then the computer is going to restart. Once that's done, uh, that should be basically it. We should be all set. I'm also going to download for her Adobe Reader, uh, PDF Reader uh, and that's about it. Uh, so yeah, that should be all set.
And actually, one more thing before we finish up with this uh, setup of this computer, which is great. Of course, uh, I do want to mention with the new Windows Start menu, you actually it doesn't have to be just up and down like this, where you have to scroll up and down. You can actually expand it a little more to the right, like this, so that way it's a little more clear on what you see. And I like doing this just because it does help. Uh, it does help out. Now, Windows 10 does have a mail app. I don't personally like it. It does need a lot of improvement. So until that is improved, what I would recommend is go to Microsoft's uh, Google search, actually. If you just open up uh, Google Chrome and search Microsoft, you will get prompted to enable the extension for Avast. Uh, but if you search Microsoft Live Mail, Microsoft Live Mail and then sign into your Microsoft account. Uh, let's see here. I do apologize. There it is. I'm sorry. It's Windows Essentials. So if you search Microsoft Live Mail, the third item on the list says Windows Essentials. Uh, that gives you basically quite a few things from Microsoft. It gives you their uh, Windows Mail, which is different than from the one that comes with Windows 10. And I prefer that a little more. It also gives you a movie maker. So if you're looking to maybe edit movies... Uh, or make some kind of movie if it's movies from photos or movies that you recorded on a camera you can use that to create the movies and then uh, render them out as one big movie uh, windows live mail you got windows live writer which basically is for like blogs uh, essentially it's basically to write a blog and you can post photos videos and stuff like that with it photo gallery of course it gives you one drive and then also as well you get some help with Windows Essentials for support but it is a good additional thing you can get from Microsoft and I do end up getting that so that is the other thing that I would recommend once you download it once again you click on download now you're gonna get a little icon once you hit save you're gonna get it down here on the bottom you click on that you hit yes it's gonna say Windows Essentials 2012 now you can do two things you can install all the windows essentials or you can do choose what programs you want i always choose what programs i want we don't need writer she doesn't need messenger photo gallery and movie maker i'll leave that on there just in case and then definitely the windows essentials mail is going to stay on there and then hit install and then of course that will install once that's done uh, we should be all set and then we're going to go ahead and check out how much of a difference it is in speed between now and what it was before now clearly we've changed a lot of parts so it's going to be a lot faster for the boot up time um, but yeah and also as well just to mention you can remove these icons you can also resize them as well by right click on them uh, i definitely will be removing quite of these icons because she just doesn't need all these on here but yeah that's about it guys all right guys so real quick we're going to go ahead and do the speed test here it's going to be i'm going to tell you right now it's going to be crazy fast so let's just go ahead and do this real quick Um, so that's it all right guys so that's it thank you so much for watching but yeah the computer's set up we did some cable management as best as we could because the wires are a little long and the board's really small and the case is really big so the wires don't sit perfectly but it's good enough um, we got the computer fully updated all the software is installed it boots really fast we actually did uh, a you guys just saw the boot test between the two differences but really it was irrelevant because we changed just more than a hard drive we also changed the motherboard different kind of ram and also the processor but still i am actually truly impressed how fast this uh um, turns on it goes past post and it's actually pretty ridiculous i didn't expect it to go that fast it goes faster actually than either one of my other computers so 
I am truly impressed on that end. It is a little loud because of that 8800. At some point we might change it to a newer car where the fan doesn't spin as much. But for now it'll do. Like I said, she doesn't need much. It just needs to be able to use a computer. But it's great. It's running really, really good. Super excited about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of tips and tricks that I showed you in this video. I know it was a little longer video, but I do appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, and once again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button if you did enjoy it. Please do subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.